One of the challenges of teaching a technical program such as instrumentation is how to conduct troubleshooting exercises in a way that is valid. You want your students to get practice troubleshooting real faults in real systems, but the problem is how to introduce realistic faults in real systems that are not immediately apparent by visual inspection. So taking a look at this system, for example, we've got a three-phase reversing motor starter connected to a three-phase motor. We've got the forward and reverse contactors, the overload block, control power transformer, fuses, etc. And this is great. Students have wired up and they've gotten it to work. But if I were to fault something, like let's say I were to uh, remove one of the overload heaters here to place a fault in line with one of the terminals of the motor, that would be visually obvious. Anyone could just look at this and say, oh, the heater is gone. And that's not a valid troubleshooting exercise. You really need the student to uh, determine where the fault is by electrical measurements, not by visual inspection. So here's one way we've developed to do this. And that is to take what we call a troubleshooting harness right here, a terminal block with a bunch of wires connected to it. Each of the wires is properly labeled with a number. And this harness, this wire bundle, goes over here and connects to various points in the circuit, test points. So terminal 2, terminal 1, 7, 6, 5. And all these test points are now made available for measurement with a meter over here. What we can do then is introduce a fault into the circuit any way we wish. And then to maintain the integrity of the exercise, we take some sort of box. It could be as simple as a cardboard box, and we place it over the top of this so that whatever we have done to break it is no longer visually apparent. This is all hidden from view. Now the student's only access to information about the broken circuit is watching its behavior as we push the switches and see the motor work, and then taking measurements over here at the terminal block. So this way they still have to exercise troubleshooting diagnostic ability, and they're not able to simply look and see what the fault is visually. This means, of course, they have to have a schematic diagram with all the test points called out. So that's what we've done here. We've taken this particular schematic that the team made for their motor starter, and we have augmented that schematic with test points. So there's test point one pointing to that wire, test point two, test point three, test point four, and so on. So they can look at the schematic, and as they reason through what the problem might be, they can identify which test points they will take voltage measurements between, and then take their measurements here. Furthermore, once they are uh, pretty sure they have the fault confirmed, or the fault uh, diagnosed, they can shut the power off to the system, and then do a continuity check or a resistance check between test points here, and confirm the location and the nature of the fault. So I just want to show this to give instructors ideas of how they could do uh, valid troubleshooting assessments, and at the same time, um, you know, do it on a realistic system like this, uh, where you know if you try to place a fault in here uh, without actually breaking a component, that you're likely to make it visible. And this is a way to keep the fault itself invisible, so the students still have to apply troubleshooting and diagnostic reasoning, and they do so through the troubleshooting harness. It's very simple to build, works very well. This also works exceptionally well if the circuit that's being trouble um, shot over here is on a breadboard. So if you're teaching an electronics course where students use solderless breadboards to assemble circuits, you face the same problem with troubleshooting there. How do we make realistic troubleshooting exercises when you can just look at the breadboard and see what's broken, what's been pulled loose, or what's missing, or what's been added? So here what we do is we uh, once again take our breadboard, set it out here. We develop a smaller troubleshooting harness with smaller gauge wires, plug it into the breadboard, and then we cover the breadboard with a shop rag or with a cardboard box or something like that. The student does all the troubleshooting from the terminal block. Works very well. It's simple, inexpensive to do, and it lets you use whatever format of circuit construction you wish, and it hides, it shields all of those faults from visual access. So the student can't simply look at it and say, oh, that's missing. They have to really troubleshoot.